Hey everyone, so to get started on our project, we're obviously going to be making our um, VR narrative projects, and this will be our final project that we do for the semester. Um, and it's basically going to be a gaze-based project that we're going to be building in Unity to kind of take our player through various gaze-based UI um, events to kind of tell a story. Right now, this will be something easy that we can make um, in our Unity editor, and at the end, we'll add in our Oculus script so they actually work for Oculus. Um, which you guys probably won't be doing that portion, but I'll show you how to do it on mine and show you the finished product and give you the script So it's really easy just to kind of toggle them on and off um, But what we'll do is we'll we'll set up our scene um, So for this portion of the assignment now we're gonna be working on this for the next three weeks to finish out the semester um, But to finish up this project uh, what we're gonna need to do is first conceptualize our scene We're gonna do a rough of our scene um, We're gonna set up our camera correctly as well as UI components and I'm gonna be updating you guys pretty much every two days on this project. Um, I'm gonna build out my project so you guys can follow along on your own projects and we'll see how far we can get uh, with everybody's projects to completion. Um, okay, so in this project, um, the way this works to, to set up your initial project is first, your camera is your VR headset. I know we've kind of gone over this a little bit um, in Unity, or I'm sorry, in, in classes, but this camera uh, Unity has VR built into it. So the minute we activate VR, this camera becomes a VR camera. So just know that anytime you're building a VR project, your camera is your VR camera. Okay, so to get started, typically what I do is I'll come in with a game object. I'll set my player up and we'll just do a, uh, uh, let's see, a capsule collider here. Okay, and this will represent our player for the experience that we're making. And typically I like to make my character's scale a little bit higher. Um, usually bring it up to like a scale of two. And that'll bring that capsule collider up as well to that scale. Actually, you know what we can do? We can just do this. Let me undo that scale. I want to make sure that capsule collider is the right size. So I'm going to turn off the mesh because we don't need the mesh. I'm going to turn that off and down in my capsule collider settings. I usually like to make this 2.5, about the size of, of the character we need, right? And then my camera, I'm actually going to parent to this capsule. And my camera is going to sit just at the top of it, right about right there. So that'll be the head of this player object that we've just created. Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's there. We'll just call this our, we'll call it our Oculus camera or VR camera, we'll call it VR camera, because it could be anything. Um, and we'll call pa uh, capsule, we'll just call this our player. Okay, so our player is set up, and we'll use that as our reference as we go for this uh, project. Um, let's just make sure he's sitting on the ground, which I think he's pretty close right about there. We'll go from there. Okay, now what we need to do is, because I'm building, let's see, let me just open up the script here. So I am building the Tomb of Horrors, right? So you want to reference your script from time to time as you're building your VR experience. Um, I'm doing the Tomb of Horrors. I tried to make it so it was something feasible and easy to make. Um, start with your opening shot. Um, think about how you're going to construct your scene. And now what we're doing in, at this phase is kind of analyzing what's in our script. So in here I have some, some audio cues, right? So things that I could... Some inner monologue, some search for clues, open the door, right? These could also have audio cues with them. Um, turn around, things like that, right? You want to write down all of those different audio pieces um, and put them into a script or an audio script that you can record all those things. We'll bring those into Unity later. Um, and then also you want to write down a list of all the UI prompts you need to do. So you can come up with like a standard kind of design for it and change it as you go, but just note how many of those you're going to make, okay? So if you look at the script right here, and again, you're gonna be working on your own scripts and doing your own projects, but this is kind of a follow along. I'm building mine in tandem with you guys, so I wanna make sure that we're building it all together. Um, but opening shot, okay, let's just look. We got you waking in an old dusky tomb hallway with no idea how you got there. Your inner monologue speaks to you as you look around the dark stone hallway of the crypt. Okay, so we have a crypt, it's got a hallway in it. Candles dimly light the interior as a ghostly fog swirls around the tomb's interior. Inner monologue, where am I? What is this place? Hello, hello. Ghostly message appears, yada, yada, yada. You search around your position. Okay, so we wanna have a hallway with some area to kind of look around, maybe some interesting things around the hallway. 
And then above, you see an old, old concrete ceiling, okay, cracked and covered with mold. Great, open the door. Ah, large stone door with an old angelic carving behind me. Okay, great. All right, so we're gonna start with that. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter, I'm gonna build uh, build my scene out with Pro Builder. So I'm gonna go Window, Package Manager. And in here, I'm gonna go to Pro Builder. I can find that, Pro Builder. And I'm gonna install that into my scene. Let's do this thing really quickly. install someday should finish up here there we go or almost iteration two okay <laughs> great okay pro builders installed Perfect. I'm also going to install Pro Grids, which isn't on here, but it really helps in just kind of clicking your scene together. And you can find that by making sure that the Show Preview Packages is checked and then searching for Pro Grids. Pro Grids pops up right here. We're going to install that. It's just a really nice snapping tool in Unity that'll really help you with your layout of your project. And it's built by Unity as well. Um, I'm surprised why they haven't just included it into Unity because it is so useful. Um, it seems to be they're always breaking it though, but whatever. Okay, so now that's in our scene. So we've got Pro Builder and Pro Grids. Those should be up in your Tools menu. You have Pro Grids and Pro Builder. I'm gonna start with Pro Grids and open that. That'll give me my nice little grid snapping tool right here. And then inside Tools, I'm gonna open up Pro Builder, bring in my Pro Builder window, put this into my scene right there, and we'll start with our new shape. Okay, I want to make sure our new shape is on the ground. So we'll put that at zero. Right there. Make sure my new shape window. Okay. Good. Okay. There we go. Oh, let's turn ProGrids on. So you notice if ProGrids is on, how your pieces will snap. It's really going to help when you're constructing your level and putting things together. Um, you'll notice how everything snaps evenly to, I have it set at 0.5. So if you look at the position of this cube, it's at, it's always going at, at nice uh, increments, right? It's snapping exactly where it needs to be. As you move it, you might see the numbers kind of fluctuate, but then when it stops, it'll always stop on exactly what you need. Um, okay, so we're gonna bring this down to zero and zero and zero. All right, we'll start right there. There's kind of the center of our level. And I'm gonna build this hallway out. So this is pretty easy enough to build. Come in here. I think they said it was a long hallway, right? So let's make it about, uh, we'll say about yay big, keeping our player in the center. And we'll build this out to the beginning. And this, this process, you're just kind of whitewalling your scene, right? You want to put all the elements in there, uh, white box it together, and when you're ready, you're going to get um, all the textures and all those different pieces and start kind of putting it together. And again, I'm just using Pro Builder pieces to just kind of white box everything together, right? So just kind of coming in here, that there, duplicate it, bring this over here. See how nice that snapping is when you have that? It just makes it really, really easy. We can look at our game view to see what we're looking at. Okay, there's our long hallway, great. Go back to my scene view. And get comfortable with Pro Builder. You know, Pro Builder is one of those tools that you're gonna use a lot in Unity. Remember, if you need to do extrusions, hold down the shift key and just kind of pull out all of the extrude. And bring those pieces together. Something like that. And we'll bring that together like that. There we go. You can also use the mirror function. So I did some editing to this little wall here. If I need to mirror it over, delete that first one, click on my object. And then in your objects, you have mirror objects right here. I can just literally say mirror. And it'll mirror it. Probably want to duplicate it. Control D. Ah, 
Let's go ahead and control D. There we go. And mirror. And then bring that over to the side. All right. And I'll probably align these so they touch right there and fix my floor a little bit. See how quickly it is? You can just kind of iterate super quickly. Don't reinvent the wheel, you know, and just do one side of something and go from there. Now, uh, you want to make sure that your lighting is turned off because I think this is a pretty good time to actually work on just some simple little lighting. Uh, make sure your lighting is, light baking is turned off. This will make it easier in your scene. Um, the next thing you want to do when you start kind of conceptualizing the level that you're building, so we've got our long hallway here, right? The next thing we want to do is just add some kind of initial lighting into your level to kind of set the mood. Um, anytime I'm making like a little VR experience, this is kind of the next step. So I've got some basic, really, really basic geometry in here. Um, but I can come in next and say, you know what? Let's go ahead and create a skybox. I'm going to go create material. We'll just call this skybox. All right. And in our skybox, go ahead and bring this down. And go procedural. We can change the colors. All right. I know we did this a couple of times in class, but just so you remember, that's how you do it. You make it a material, you make it a skybox and then make it skybox procedural. Now we can change the colors, right? So this is obviously nighttime. So I'm gonna go for like a blue, a bluish light. We're gonna turn this atmosphere thickness down way, and the ground will also bring that down. Make it a lot darker. Exposure, we can bring that down too. Make it really nighttimey. And to apply it to your scene, you just take your material and just click, drop it in your scene, okay? Now, the minute you hit play, you should see some of those. There we go. Okay, now my sun is actually lighter right here. Well, this is nighttime, so it's actually set to yellow, which is kind of why this looks that yellowish color. And that's your directional light in your scene. I'm going to go ahead and change that to the color of whatever your scene is. So this one's nighttime, so I'm going to go for a bluish kind of moonlight, right? Go for something like that. Okay, I might even go ahead and turn down my shadows a little bit. Um, if I go into the directional light settings and go to the shadows right here, I can bring that strength down just to shade. It's going to let you see a little bit more, especially if you're doing something at nighttime like I'm doing. And this is just, you know, obviously the project that I'm making to assist you guys. You guys will be building your own, so you can mess around with those settings as much as you want. Um, okay, so in here, just to add a little bit more to my scene, let's go ahead and center this whole little level piece. There we go. It's our characters right here. I'm going to bring him back just a little bit so he awakens in a long hallway. We're actually going to have him turn around and go out this way. So what we need to do next is go ahead and create another little room for him to go into. Because I think I only have two rooms in this experience. We just have our main hallway and the room that he goes into. So this will be the room that he goes into. And maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. Just kind of change the size of it ever so slightly. So bring that out. I got one, two, three, four, five. I like to count the, uh, the little units I have in here. One, two, three, four, five. Kind of a quick way to do spacing. Um, and then I'm gonna scale this together. Whoa, that's a lot. Let's scale that down a little bit. And I'll scale this down a little bit too. Right. And we can fix that if we go into, I know it's not perfect, but if I go into my edge tool and then move it, again, remember we're on that snapping, so we can get that more perfect. All right, so I try to get it as close as I could, and I'll snap it to what I want, right? This side, same thing. Let's bring that down here. Get that to what we want, and this side, same thing. I'm just looking at those lines. It's nice to have that grid texture on there. And maybe I'll bring this back wall back just a little bit. Bring that down here. There we go. Okay. So he's going to be in this big hall. And as he turns around, he'll enter this room where our horror session is going to begin. Now, a quick way to build this room out is, again, just do one half and then flip it over. So in here, I'll just make another cube. Go new shape. Come in here. And 
again we'll just pull this out and I'll extrude it this way bring it down here maybe I'll mess with again these little edges edge loops here or these edges bring that over like that so we get a nice extrusion downwards hold shift extrude it downwards again hold shift and extrude it downwards and this is pretty much like the premier tool pro builder if you're doing level design you you really want to use this tool it just helps so much when you're uh, trying to build your own levels you just make sure that this is what I want okay I'm gonna grab these top parts right here and making a wall is as simple as just pulling this guy up that up and then again I'm just gonna click this wall I'm gonna control D to duplicate and I'm just going to say mirror objects put that on the other side All right. now I might have some overlap in the back part here that's really easy to fix we'll just come into come over here let's just pull this one side of the wall back a little bit just pull it back a little bit oh, right there and then I'll just bring this back over, snap it into place. There we go. All right, fill those gaps. Oh, looks like we're still a little bit off. Let's pull this side back a little bit. And there's a little, just some tweaking. There we go. I'm just working on the walls, right? Bring that. There we go. Okay. So we've got our hallway, and then we've got the room that we're eventually going to enter. Um, at this point, you know, we've got a basic setup for a level. Nothing crazy going on. We can add a lot more details like columns and a roof line. I'll probably do some, like, almost cathedral-style roof, I think, at this part when you go into this, you know, finale of the level. Um, or of the experience, sorry. Um, but what I like to do is just throw some lights in here to kind of set the mood. So I've got my my um, directional light, right? Let's go ahead and first let's grab all our Pro Builder stuff and we'll put it in an object. So I'm going to go Game Object, Create Empty. And we'll just call this, I'll just call this Level or Scene Objects, right? And I'll grab all this Pro Builder stuff and I'll just throw in Scene Objects. Just to kind of clean that up a little bit because this can start getting out of control. And then in our scene here, I'm going to come into Game Objects. We're going to go down to Light, Point Light. And with these little point lights in here, I'm just going to start accenting my scene a little bit. So point lights are great to do that. You can change their size by just pulling those little handles on them. Or you can come into the range setting and adjust that as well. Um, again, we have Moonlight, so I'm going to make this a little more blue. Right, something like that. And we'll duplicate it. And we'll just put like four of those in here just to kind of help set the mood. Right? Make it spookier. Okay. Next thing I need is obviously I have this basic scene I'm setting up. Think about the kind of props you want to put in your scene. So here's my character, right? I awaken inside my scene here. So this is where we're going to fade in on. Um, I probably want to have things like, you know, it is a tomb, right? So maybe I'll have like some caskets, some angelic statues, I don't know, some spider webs. I know they mentioned some eerie fog, right? So we'll put that in there. And probably an opening down here of maybe some gates that are cracked open or something like that. We'll get to that part later. But you kind of want to jot those down, those pieces you're going to want to put in. Now, I'm not asking you guys to, you know, go crazy and make it AAA, but have some fun with it. Try to try to add in some cool stuff. You can get it all off the asset store if you want, but just decorate your scene so it looks nice. Put some interesting things in there. Um, I'm going to go in the asset store right now and just see if I can get some brick textures to kind of start filling out this mausoleum. And maybe we can find some statues and some other stuff too. All right, so I'm going to go in the asset store. If it can connect here. There we go. And in here, I'm going to search for, we'll just go brick texture. And remember, there's tons of free stuff in here. 
right? So brick texture, if you need to find it, just click free assets and see what we've got in here. So this one's pretty good, this PBR one, but maybe we've got this tileable brick wall, oh, hand painted. I'll just use this hand painted low poly for now. You can always change it later. It's always good to just get something and throw it in there and then we can, we can modify it later. So I'll just download that and I'll use this as kind of just a base texture. I like to kind of fill in textures as I go, um, just to put them into my project. Um, just so there's something there to look at, right? You start to get the feeling of it as you start adding stuff into your scene. So I've got my hand-painted stone. Let's go down to the material. There we go, stone floor. I'm gonna go back to my scene and let's go ahead and drop that in. Right, we've got stone floor. We'll use it for our walls also. And everything else, all right? I don't know if we have it on our ceiling up here. Okay, we should be good. Okay, now let's just look at the texture in my game view. So it's a little small. I'm gonna go into the stone floor. I'm just make the size of that um, like 0.25. We'll change that tiling so it's much less. There we go. That already looks better, All right? Go back to my scene view. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and first, I'm gonna save my my level just because I have something going here. I'm also gonna do a little quick organization, come to my game object, create empty. Let's just make a lights, all right? And I'll go ahead and add all my lights in my scene, my directional and all these point lights. Go ahead and throw in our lights object. And I just like to do that to keep organized, all right? So that looks good. Let's go ahead and quick play. That should be able to activate. Sometimes the lights might not get the right, uh, let's see, why aren't these showing up here? Real time. Huh. Not seeing any real, let's go to our stone floors. This, oh, bump diffuse, let's change this texture. Uh, you might have noticed that the lights weren't reflecting off it because it's mobile. Those are typically unlit or using like a color ramp. Um, I'm gonna bring these, I'm gonna change this, uh, this stone floor texture back to standard. There we go just to take advantage of the, the rendering engine. If you ever notice that you put textures on something and you don't see an effect happening, it's probably just because the, the texture is either set to unlit or some type of mobile shader where it's not allowing uh, real-time lights. Uh, but that looks pretty good. Okay, we go ahead and we go to game. Great. All right, so we've got something going here, something to start with. Let's go into the asset store really quickly. Let's see if we have any statues. Uh, we'll come down to uh, statue, I don't know, angel, let's see, any angel statues, any free angel statues, it's even better, let's see, let's click on free, oh, I've got this guy, angel statue, free, uh, not exactly what I'm looking for, but it's actually not bad. Uh, all right, let's put it in. Use that for now. I might uh, retexture this or make it more gray, um, but let's just put it in the project for now. Just, just again to throw some stuff in there so we have some stuff. All right. So if we go into my scene, uh, let's go ahead and find our angel statue. If we go in our prefabs. Oh, there we go. We've got a nice little angel. Ah, cool. That's gonna work. All right. It's not really scary, um, but it might work for later on. We'll do something like that. I don't really like it's, it's uh, uh, you know, let's just see. Is there any other thing? You know, this is kind of <laughs> something you want to search for. Let's see, statue. Let's just do statue and see what we have here. Statue, and then we'll go free. What else do we have in here that we can use? Oh, screaming statue. That's pretty good. Uh, maybe not. Seeing if there's anything else we can use in here. Oh, free feline gargoyle. That's not bad. Um, all right. I actually like that better. I think it goes more with the aesthetic that we're trying to do. <laughs> All right, so import here. Remember, it's the Tomb of Horrors, right? So 
Maybe we can use a bunch of this and see what we come up with. Throw our scene. Maybe I can use this as like a focal point in the background here in this room that we go into. Save those for later. You make it a little bit bigger. Something like that. And I'll just scale it. Again, we'll just use some of these point lights to kind of come in here and add a little bit of mood to our scene, right? This would probably be good next to some stained glass windows or something in the back. All right, good, 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 good. Okay. Now yeah, that already looks already looks a lot better. Okay. So that's looking good. Just turn these guys. I want to make sure that their shields are pointing the same way. There we go. Nice. Okay. Great. Okay, so I've got the basics of a scene set up. I think we have that gargoyle here, so let's grab that. Let's throw a couple of these in here. We'll go to our prefab. Beeline gargoyle. Oh, that's great. That'll work perfect. Put this in our scene. Same thing. We'll just duplicate that. Turn that. There you go. Great. Okay. Now I'll probably build out some more details with Pro Builder in here, like columns. And I'll just put a couple in there really quickly. If we go to our shape settings, I'm just going to grab a little shape here. Bring it up. I might try to find like some type of. Uh, cement texture um, just bring this in here and I'm just roughing right this is all just being roughed out I might even replace these these pieces I have but I have something kind of together here the great thing about using unity to do this is you can conceptualize very very quickly right you can get stuff going very very quickly um, push those in the wall a little bit without having to iterate too much right and I'm just duplicating these columns down. There we go. All right, let's see. They said there was dimly lit candles, but we'll get into that later. Um, okay, great. And I'll work on that door later as well. Um, they did say there's fog, so I think maybe for this first part, I'm going to add some fog in. So I'm going to go to Game Object, 3D Object. And we'll go down to Tools, or I'm sorry, Game Object, Effects particle system. And if you ever want to do fog or you do have fog in your game, you know, particles are a great way, a low cost way to add a lot of value and mood to your scene without having too much effect on performance, right? So anytime you're doing something like fog, first thing you want to do is you want to take the speed away. So I'm going to go zero on my speed, right? So you can see now the particles are just kind of chilling, right? Like where they're at. And then instead of the cone, which it's set at as its, its shape, I'm going to change that to a box, okay? Now I have a box, I can change the box size, right? Oh, the particles are always on their side. All right, so I can kind of, there we go, there's our low-lying fog, right? And so for here, once you have that set up, you see how the particles just kind of appear around this box, right? I can go ahead and change their start size, and we'll just do random between two constants. So I'll do like a 
3 and a 10. All right, that's pretty good. And then to get that popping to stop, right, I can come down to my color over lifetime and change it at the beginning from zero to maybe like half fog. And then when it comes out, let the alpha go back down to zero. So it's zero alpha when it comes in, and it's about 99%. It's a little higher at 128. And we go back down to zero. And you see how that does really nice transitions on that, right? Now, to make those last longer, you come in and say, you know what, let's make the duration of those eight seconds and their lifetime make like 10 seconds, right? The fog will stay in there pretty long. Now, I think it's maybe even a little too thick. So again, to fix that, I'm just going to come down to my color over lifetime again. Click on that gradient and just reduce those. There we go, something like that. Right there. I could change the color at this point too. So I'll just grab this first little picker right here. And we'll change this to more of like a maybe like a greenish blue. I think it works pretty good. And for this second one, same thing. I'll just go into like a greenish blue color. That's looking like a dark, kind of scary fog. A little bit eerie, right? That looks good, and that'll just stay there doing that throughout our scene. That's looking good right there. Then I'm just going to duplicate that and reuse it. You know, you want to think about reusing elements inside your Unity scene. So I'm going to reuse that fog into this little chamber as well. And the cool thing with fog is, especially with the nodes we're going to do to actually activate pieces in our scene, we can animate this fog too. So I, you know, if I want to make the fog intensify or become more demonic, I could I could animate those values later if I needed to. Um, that looks pretty good. Now the one thing I want to do is make sure that it is pre-warmed, so the fog is always going when it starts. So if I go to my game window and I press play, all right, when it starts up, it's already going. Right. Okay. So. You know, for this first little tutorial, we're just kind of fleshing out our scene and putting things together, right? I'm not doing much. I'm just kind of, you know, white boxing the elements that are going to be in here. Um, I'll go ahead and set up the area for the door really quickly. And then we'll do a very quick um, UI lead in to the scene, kind of like you're waking up. And that'll be good for this scene. Now, you guys can obviously edit that to be whatever you want in your scenes. Um, this is just following the script that I wrote, and I want you guys to experiment with yours and create what you want to do in your scenes. But this should give you an idea of just kind of how to rudimentary put something together. So in here, I'm just going to edit these little pieces here. So I have some type of door I can work with. I want. So I'm gonna have this come up, and I don't care about it. What happens out here? Because you're never gonna see it. So that's why I'm just kind of like letting it go outside my level. There's that. All right, that's good. I'll bring that forward just a smidge. There we go. And I'm just gonna duplicate this and mirror it. the other side something like that's pretty good there we go we've got that and then we'll just join it together on one of these sides right here just click it together it's like Legos right so there's where our door will be now I can design a door piece to actually fit in there um, and to do that I'm just gonna make a new shape bring that over here I like to use cubes for all this kind of stuff. It just makes it easy. Again, you can always come back in and refine it. But at least you're getting something together here. All right, so I've got my door. 
And let's just go ahead and extrude that. And bring it down. There we go. Okay. So I've got my door set up. Perfect. This will be an object that I'll probably redo later or do just a custom texture for. A little bit. I think I had like creepy uh, angelic carving on there. Um, we'll put some little candles and torches in here I think is pretty good. We'll do some, uh, some, you know, I'm already getting some ideas just by kind of putting this really simple level together, right? Um, okay, so next thing I'm going to do just to close out this first segment is I'm going to have my, my, my scene kind of fade in, right? We don't really have anything set up for our UI right now for the fade in of our scene. Um, but I'll go ahead and do that. And this is really, really easy to do. You can do it just on a standard UI. Um, let me go ahead and grab my Pro Builder pieces here and just again, organize everything. So put these up into my scene objects. And the same with my statues. I'll put those in scene objects as well. Those there, my lights and particles. You can leave those out for now. I'll probably organize those later. Okay, so to start up, uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's just drag this down to the start of our level just so we close that out as well. Great, okay. Perfect, so the scene starts up. If I press play, there we go. Okay, awesome. All right. We can add more detail to it as I go, but again, I'm just fleshing things out. And this is the first part of any type of project. You want to make sure that you're spending some time to kind of flesh out the look and feel of what you're doing. Even if it's just basic and rudimentary, like what I'm doing here, I'm just, I'm putting something together. You know, my script calls for one room and then you go into another chamber and then something happens right here where there's some uh, coffin that opens up, right? We'll get into all that later with triggers and UI elements and everything. Um, but for right now, uh, the next thing I want to do is just do a simple fade in and we'll call this done for the first part of this. You guys will be working on your own experiences and just kind of white boxing the scene, just putting it together however you want. Um, and then we'll be going through detail passes and adding more stuff to it, right? Um, but for right now, this is plenty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead again and add the fade in. So to do that, it's really, really easy. I'm going to go to game object. I'm going to go to UI. And we're going to go to uh, raw image, or I'm sorry, actually just image, image is fine. Let's go to image. Now on your UI, now remember your UI is always linked to your camera, right? So if I go to my game view, there's my UI, right? So all I need to do is I'm just going to have it fade from black. Um, so I'm not referencing any sprites. I'm just going to turn this little image node. I'm going to turn it black, have it cover the whole area and just animate it from zero. I'm sorry, from, from full to zero. And that'll always just happen. We'll have it animate once every time the, the, the experience starts up. Really, really easy to do, right? So if I go back to my scene, and here I'm just gonna take this little image and just make it stretch all the way across my canvas. And we'll make sure it's stretched in our settings too. We'll say, hey, you're gonna be on all corners right there, right? That's in your little stretch settings right here. And down on the image properties, the color, we'll just go ahead and make it black, All right? Now to have it fade in, in my scene, if I click on my image, we'll just call this, we can even call this canvas, like canvas fader, right? And we can call this like uh, fade screen, something like that, right? It is attached to my camera. Right, so all I have to do is animate this. So to do that, I'm gonna go to Window, Animation, Animation tab, open that up. I'll go ahead and dock this into my scene so I can use it. To begin animating fade screen, create an animator, so let's create it. And in here in the Tomb of Horrors, we'll just go to Assets. And in here we'll say Screen Fade, Anim, say Save. And so I'm gonna turn record mode on. I'm gonna go down to, I'll just do like a really nice slow fade. We'll go to four seconds. And oh, 
at first, hold on, let's go back to zero. You need to make that initial node when you start. So to do that, click on your color and then just kind of move the, just move the slider so it, it registers that first, uh, it was when you're in record mode, it registers that first keyframe. And then down at about four seconds, I'm gonna come down and pull out the alpha to zero, All right? So if I play my scene right now, let's go ahead and go out of here and just play it, it should. There we go, All right, we got our nice fade. It's probably gonna loop though. There you go, see? Now it keeps looping, all right? Now there's a couple things you could do with this. You could animate like two blocks that like move up and down, like the eyes are opening, that works too. I think a simple fade's just fine. Um, but again, it was looping, so to fix that, we'll go to our project. We'll go ahead and click on our screen fade, anim, and we'll say loop time zero. We'll go ahead and play it. And there we go, our scene fades in, right? Now to add a little more drama to this, we could do some head bobbing action, like it's, you know, it just kind of woke up, etc. We can even add in some post-processing where not only does it fade in, but we can actually have it blur and then go into focus. And we'll work on that later when we get into the polishing phase. But um, for this first part of the assignment, I just want you to start fleshing out your level, right? And remember, your canvas is going to look huge if you do this. If you do a fade in like that, it'll be ginormous in your level. Um, and that's it's meant that way for a purpose. It's attached to your, your screen, so it's kind of out of the way. Um, but just work on your level, right? Um, just start white boxing out what you're going to be putting in there. Just put some basic lights in there and just start kind of constructing something that you can start working with to finish out your project. Um, even though you see that canvas in my level right there, it, it doesn't matter. It's just meant to be there. Um, if you go to the canvas in your scene, so canvas fader, and just turn it off. All right, that's one way to get rid of it. I think you can, I'm not sure if you can move it. Hold on. If I go to screen space, camera, and then we select our camera. So we go to our VR camera. Um, I believe that'll do the same thing. Yeah, so if I go play. No, that doesn't do it. Hold on. No, we got to keep it at overlay. Seeing if I can move it out of the way, but it doesn't look like they'll let you move it. It used to be able to, but that's weird. Um, let me just make sure here. Canvas, target display, display one. No, yeah, it's fine. So if that gets in the way when you're working on your project, just turn it off, and then when you're ready, turn it back on. Um, then again, we should have our basic kind of scene, you know, something fleshed out with whatever kind of elements you want to put in there. Just kind of work on that. Just white box the, the scene, put it together, and then our next lesson, we're gonna be working on our UI cues to actually make our character move around and do stuff. And maybe we'll add in some music, I'll have some audio, we'll a bunch of different pieces we'll start adding. And again, I'll start updating every two days so you guys get this kind of at the beginning of our project, we're final here. So every couple of days, you'll get a new video from me that kind of talks about you know, different elements you can add into your project. You can follow along and add those to yours. I'll try to describe it on my YouTube link so you can follow along and we'll go from there. So happy final project building. Um, look forward to seeing what you guys are coming up with. Um, for the assignment, um, again, this is for our final, but for progress updates, I'm just gonna be having really like, you know, uh, low cost updates just so you guys are letting me know that you're doing something towards your final. Um, it'll just be screen captures. So just uh, just show me inside of Unity, um, basically like what you're building. This is good enough. Something that whatever type of scene you're putting together, whatever it is, obviously it's not going to be mine. It's going to be your own. Um, but just show me what you're building on. Just a nice screen capture would work. Um, and we'll upload those to Canvas. Okay? So that's more or less just to let me know things are, are happening. So look forward to seeing what you guys are doing. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks.